The Bahamas in the middle of a terror plot. Also, let the record reflect that, that I, I've only met one bullet. Yeah. I've only met one bullet. When you were faced with your chairman being threatened to be set up, you ought to have called the police. Yes! yes. You allowed your chairman to go and be set up. Also, nine pit bulls burnt to death behind this business establishment here in the Bain and Grantstown area. I'll tell you what representatives from the Bahamas Humane Society have to say about it. And in Martinique, the Bahamas strikes gold. The Bahamas Tonight starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Bahamas in the spotlight following the deadly terrorist attacks in Brussels, Belgium yesterday. Good Wednesday evening, Bahamas. I'm Altaviz Munnings. I'm Keish Latterly. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, topping the news tonight, Interpol issued a red notice for a suspect Khalid El Bakarawi, who was reported by foreign authorities as having Bahamian and Belgian citizenship. Well, the alleged subway bomber is one of two brothers believed to be responsible for killing more than 30 and injuring nearly 300 individuals in the attacks on an airport and subway station in Brussels. And as the reports went viral that the 27-year-old suspect had ties here, Clint Watson tells us that officials wasted no time in correcting the issue. Commissioner of Police Allison Greenslade said Wednesday there is no information whatsoever to confirm that suspected terrorist in the Belgium attacks, Khalid El Bakraoui, is Bahamian. Interpol, the International Police Link Agency, lists the suspect with the nationality Belgium Bahamas. The commissioner says, quote, wrong protocol, absolute nonsense, end quote. National Security Minister the Honorable Dr. Bernard Nottage addressed the issue in Parliament Wednesday. The matter is being pursued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as well as the Royal Bahamas Police Force. And uh, I've been, it's been indicated to me that as far as the force is concerned, uh, there's no evidence that has been discovered to suggest that he is Bahamian. Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister the Honorable Fred Mitchell told our news team that they're trying to find out what basis the assertion was made. So checks are being done with the Belgians to find out the basis upon which they make the assertion that the person is Bahamian. The uh, minister did indicate that the Bahamian nationality is not confirmed, so it's something that we are checking. We checked, uh, we're asking immigration to check to see whether or not there's a naturalization file. We've asked uh, the passport office to check to see whether the individual uh, has a passport and we're checking with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to find out from the Belgians themselves what is the basis upon which they are um, uh, seeking to, or are saying that he does in fact have a Bahamian nationality. These implications do present security concerns though, especially for the Bahamas and Minister Mitchell says it's something they're also addressing. Uh, we've certainly been in touch with the Americans who obviously would be very concerned about about this uh, given that uh, you know they're the country that people are really trying to get at their citizens are here so we're just being watchful careful this country has nothing to do with that business uh, and uh, we try to maintain and we think we do have a safe and secure uh, destination for people to come to the Belgium terrorist attacks came extremely close to impacting a Bahamian diplomat. Minister Mitchell revealed to our news team that Ambassador to Switzerland, Her Excellency Rhoda Jackson, who was in Brussels and traveling back to Geneva, missed the bombing by a split-second decision to choose one flight time over another. Had she taken the other option, she would have been in the very same terminal around the same time of the bombing. You know, she was in Belgium a couple of hours, just left a couple of hours before the bombing and so wasn't affected by it. But uh, insofar as we know, there are no Bahamians who have been affected by it. The Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister has advised Bahamian travelers, particularly to Europe, to exercise vigilance. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Now to news from Parliament. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis confirming in the House of Assembly last night that he did meet with one of the would-be murder-for-hire criminals, alleging that he was informed of a plot to set up his now former chairman and senator, Michael Pintard. Let the record reflect that, that I, I've only met one bullet. Yes. I've only met one bullet. Yes. But Mr. Speaker, 
I want the Bahamian people to appreciate that if somebody says to you, to me, that your chairman is going to a meeting, your chairman, your chairman will be set up. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie taking grave exception to the admission by telling the House that his life was reportedly also threatened. He said that Dr. Minnis should have done the proper thing and report the matter to the police. You were faced with your chairman <coughs> being threatened to be set up. You ought to have called the, the police. police. Yes. yes. When I was faced with the realization that these allegations were made, I called the minister of national security and said to him, I would wish the police to be involved. Right. My immediate response was, let the police investigate. You allowed your chairman to go and be set up. I have no idea, none whatsoever about this matter. But the one thing I know and I hope that the police will fully investigate it. So even as we sit and debate this here, what you did in your home, I presume, um, Mr. You will be able to explain to the police. If the police apprehend these people who have been in your home, I presume they will say. If they say what you say, then that's it. The point, of, the point of the matter is, I have no knowledge. I'm only saying to you, why did you allow your man to walk into that, what you say was the trap? Well, Golden Gates MP, the Honorable Shane Gibson, has labeled opposition members as hypocrites after they reportedly took a plane ride to one of the islands in a plane reportedly owned by a numbers boss. Gibson says the Free National Movement has argued that the Progressive Liberal Party is in the hands of the numbers men and other investors, and they themselves were photographed on their aircraft. East Grand Bahama MP Peter Turnquest, however, charged that it was the PLP who legalized gaming and that they did nothing wrong. Members. Even before we regularize, even before we decide to regularize and regulate and Web Shop Gaming in the Bahamas, right. these guys had business license right. issued by them. That's right. So I they were never illegal as far as I was concerned. It's your all saying, well, why were you saying illegal? I never said illegal. As far as I'm concerned, if they get a business license to operate, they paid business license fees on their operations. They paid it every year. When I checked the record, they paid for national insurance contributions. They had over, in one of those web shops, they had over 500 persons employed. 500 employed, Mr. Speaker. And they actually paid national insurance contributions for every single one of them every year they were in operation. So my position is they were never illegal. Never. But my concern is I don't like hypocrites. The member, the member is absolutely correct. Uh, as far as I understand it, and, I, and to be honest, I don't know uh, if that is in fact uh, the, the owned by the, the web shop board. Uh, but what I do know, Mr. Speaker, is that this government legalized web shop and gave a provisional license to those same gentlemen that he now speaks about. And so anything that would have happened with respect to us utilizing that piece of equipment, it's not illegal. Gibson also took issue with Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins, who he accused of following the philosophy of his former NDP party. Gibson said it was wrong for Rollins to speak against his FNM leader, Dr. Hubert Minnis. He also played a recording of Rollins' appearance on a talk show. Rollins responded this way. He took him in his bosom. Yeah. And as he said to Beagle, he said, you're comical, you're comical. <laughs> he said, there's nothing that Dr. Minnis can say that's going to remove the sense of embarrassment. That surrounds his answer. He talked about his leader. He talked about his leader. I was asked the question if I believe my leader is believable. And I did not, I did not say that I did not believe my leader. I said I expected my leader as being truthful about everything that he has said. I said, however, when I listen to uh, what was said, I find it comical. That is an honest answer. And I stand by it. Well, the Labour Minister also defended the record of the Christie administration in job creation. This after the government has been criticized over an election promise of 10,000 jobs. Well, in setting the record straight, he said the number of jobs have in fact doubled and there's more, there are more rather, in the pipeline. Here's Janae Noel Ferguson.
From May 2013 to November 2015, Labor Minister Shane Gibson said the government had seen a steady increase in job creation. When the Progressive Liberal Party came into office in May 2012, Gibson said unemployment was 160,650. Now, by November of that year, there was an increase of 3,000 jobs. There was also a modest increase in November 2012, to May 2013, from 163,110 to 163,995 employed, the employment figures continued to grow. In November of that same year, unemployment stood at 166,595, and at the end of the following year, also an uptick in the figures from 171,000 to 174,000. Then, Mr. Speaker, it went from November 2014 to May 2015 from 174 to 45 to 183, 915, an increase of 9,670. That's in one year, so Mr. Speaker. Wow. The net difference from May 2012 to November 2015, we have a net difference of 20,170 jobs created by the Progressive Liberal Party government. The Labor Minister, however, admitted that they were not pleased with the figures and there was still more work to be done. While MP for East Grand Bahama Peter Turnquest taking the government to task on the 2,000 layoffs at Bahama last year and growing concerns about Bahamian employment at the Point construction site, he added that there are still many unable to find jobs. That there are many Bahamians today who are unemployed, underemployed, and begging for a change, Mr. Speaker. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, it will be interesting for him to have this conversation with those people who are trying to go to work over at Barrett's Island, Mr. Speaker. So, so the statistics can mean anything. But the unemployment rate, the objective, the objective unemployment rate, shows an increase, and that is a fact that he cannot dispute, Mr. Speaker. Now, in relation to the Point Resort, Gibson said it was because of the agreement made under the former administration that the government had to compromise in the ratio of Bahamian to Chinese workers. They went and agreed to bring in the 6,000 Chinese and brought it to Parliament, just to say, listen, the blood is off my shoulder. Huh? The blood is off 8,000, approved for 8,000 Chinese. And you know what's so hurtful about, about, about that, Mr. Speaker? Members not allowed you know why that was so hurtful to me off. personally as a labor man? They agreed to bring in unskilled workers never before heard of in the history of the Bahamas. If, if they hadn't done what they did, see, the numbers wouldn't even be 70 30. It would be better than that. But they put us in such a deep hole. We tried to claw our way out. And they say, nobody the after them did this. We say, but we the PLP. They say, nobody the after them did this. We say, but we the PLP. They say, because they did this, so we, and they compromised with 70 30, Mr. Speaker. So now it is 70% Bahamians and 30% foreigners, Mr. Speaker. Janae Noel Ferguson, Sadness Network News.